Hey guys, Joe here with Tab and Slot. Today I'm going to make a video and show you how to take a piece of mild steel like this and give it a surface finish, something like that. Uh, that's what we call a patina. And uh, in order to do that, you're going to need a couple of materials, the first of which being extremely difficult to find, uh, Heinz vinegar. <laughs> um, all jokes aside, uh, Heinz vinegar is an acid, and any time that you introduce an acid to untreated steel, it's going to work as a catalyst to oxidize the material. Besides that, um, you're going to want a sponge probably, and later on you will need a terry cloth, something like that. And if you stay tuned here uh, in the next couple scenes, you'll see that I'm not actually working on a piece of rectangular steel. Uh, it's actually something pretty cool. So stick around and I'll show you what I got going on. All right, guys, as you could probably guess, at some point here, we're going to be taking the vinegar and putting it on the steel. Uh, and it's really not all that complex, you know, to put vinegar on steel, you may think. But if you want to finish like this uh, with that more natural patina look to it, uh, there's a bit of a process. So to do that, our first step is going to be to take a sponge or a cloth, put some vinegar on it, and just dab a few places here and there, and put a base, basically, on the, uh, the steel. And we're going to want to allow that to dry, uh, and it's actually going to look something fairly similar to what we've got going on here. Um, but for now, I'm going to cut ahead and flip this thing over and show you what I'm actually working on. As you can see in this shot, I've gone and just dabbed a little bit of vinegar with that sponge on the top surfaces of these letters. And what that's going to do is uh, basically create um, some droplet effects in the rust. Um, you can tell on this one, when I did it, I didn't just slather the whole thing in vinegar. I actually, you know, kind of spattered it on in certain spots and put it on real heavy in others. And it created a, a cool effect. And I'm going to try and mimic that on here. Uh, later, I will actually go and I'll douse the, uh, the terry cloth here in vinegar and cover the entire thing up. Uh, but for now, I'm going to give it a little base texture with, uh, with that sponge. So now that we've laid down a, uh, a base texture here, so to say, uh, what we're going to do is basically the, the final step in terms of oxidizing this piece of steel. Um, and what I'm going to do, not something necessarily that you have to do, but I'm going to go ahead and pour some of this right on top of this thing. And what I'm then going to do, if I can pick it up, is take it, basically just do something like that. And that'll give it kind of a cool, cool effect, I think. You know, a spatter type look once that's done. Um, I don't want it sitting on a wet piece of paper towel there, but what I do want to do is I want to take this now, and I've got some vinegar on this rag. Um, I'm just going to cover it up, and that's going to create a highly acidic atmosphere, so to say, underneath this rag to oxidize that piece of steel. Uh, this is probably the longest step in the whole process, and uh, the length really depends on how much rust you want. Uh, it could be anywhere from half an hour to, you know, three hours or overnight if you really wanted to. Um, for reference, this was about an hour, and this is what remained after I wiped it all off um, after that hour. And you'll see in the next clip here when I come back uh, just how much and how quickly uh, this acid is going to, to oxidize that piece of steel. We're at about the half an hour mark here, and what I've done is I've gone ahead and removed the cloth, and I actually gave it a, a light wipe down because what happens is you'll get a very heavy coating of surface rust, but only about half of it has actually penetrated the, uh, the material at this point and is sticking. So what I did is I wiped it off and then I put another application of vinegar on there. Um, and that's going to create uh, the effect that you see here where you've got some depth to it, where some parts are very heavy and other parts appear to be the, you know, untreated mild steel. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cover this back up and I'm going to leave it under there for probably another half an hour uh, or so, and then I'll, uh, I'll check in on it again, and uh, at that point, uh, we may be ready to, to put a final treatment on this guy. This is at about an hour in, and what I've done here since 
I'm fairly satisfied with the exception of this area um, with my patina on this is I went ahead and I used some steel wool to clean up the letters and then I took a pad sander with what used to be 100 grit sandpaper on it um, to clean those up. Um, and for our final step, well, second to final, I guess, in, in my process, uh, some of you may be fine leaving this as is. What I'm going to do is I'm now going to basically bathe this in uh, some water and baking soda, which is a base, and that's hopefully going to neutralize our vinegar and uh, stop the, the oxidation where it is now, because um, I don't want it to continue rusting and since uh, this steel has now absorbed a decent amount of that vinegar, it's going to happen much faster uh, than it normally would. Um, and after that, I'm going to take just a uh, Rust-Oleum clear coat and coat the whole thing. And basically that'll cut off its oxygen supply and it should stay like this one has. This is about a year since I did this uh, at, at this level of oxidation. Um, and I'll do a quick video at the end when it's all done to show you what that looks like. All right, guys, so there it is. That's the uh, the final product. Um, as you can tell, it's still still drying, and I got a bit of an orange peel effect going on right now. Um, I'm hoping that lays out, but, you know, that's to be expected with the, uh, the rattle can. But uh, once again, this is Joe with Tab and Slot, and if you liked our video, uh, be sure to subscribe to our channel and... Uh, Check out our website because we're constantly putting up videos like this with uh, hints, tips, and uh, bits of advice on the world of metalworking and specifically laser cutting.